most of the Revit users not know how to integrate their walls properly with their topography and landscape. These are such as retaining walls, sidewalk structure, and so forth. And there are a few things you need to know in order to make them properly. Many Revit users, including me, sometimes using splitting tool. But a splitting tool in topography in order to arrange your different levels is not always the best option. Because you want to get the really quantities because once you extract the actual landscape, actual topography details from the surveyor, you want to play with it in order to get the right quantities for excavation. So if you use splitting, that will not give you the right quantities, even you will start ruining your actual topography. In this video, I will be showing you and walking you through step by step how to put retaining walls and how to arrange your topography so it fits perfectly in order to get the right excavation quantities for your project. So let's hop on to it. In the case of sloped sides or very high sloped sides, you need to use stepped topography with multiple retaining walls. And how do we do it that in Revit? Uh, and any other modeling software really, but in Revit we will cover some techniques. So if you use split surface from your masking and side tab, it's really going to be bad because you are really splitting your topography in multiple layers. And then one, as soon as you delete one, it, it's gone. But if I delete, for example, my pad here, I will get my slope back right away because your might demand might change you might need additional things you might need something for visualization we need this one for excavation quantity so that's why we take a method and we are just doing an offset and we want to make sure that for example we need an additional 60 degrees slope over here we don't do it we just do an additional offset in order to match that so to get a conceptual or just a quantities ideas in the, at the beginning of the project so just to get it more realistic or you can go to next level by using simple dynamo or additional formulas in revit however it's sufficient for us it gives us very accurate data and it allows us to extract the quantities right away without spending so much time on it that's why we use this method. So when you use a pads, like building pads, it's simply just going a messing inside tab and the model side panel, it's building pads. Make sure that you cover your walls because if you don't cover your walls, generally the area that is a wall is being built in section, it will intersect with the topography. Right now I will be showing you in a second, a section view and you will see how neat it shows. So we know that we will be using foundations here. So we have our offset and everything. But the question is, what happens if I want to do a retaining wall that's not straight, but sloped as well? So in that case, I just go ahead and go architecture tab. You can drop the, down the components and model in place. And from here, you can select walls. So here I would say retaining wall. I'm just spending it between this, but you can also use sweep if you are doing it in chain, so multiple, uh, areas, but I will be just doing one single extrusion since since it is just spanning between the two walls uh, as a straight line. So I will be just selecting the you know, pick face, and I will be selecting it by plane, and I will be selecting the face of that wall. Now what I will be doing is I will be picking plane. I will be selecting this side. I will be selecting the top. I will be selecting the bottom portion of this, and I will be selecting the inner portion of this. So maybe I can select it from here. Then I will be using a trim tool. So in order to trim those pieces, I will slope it by five degrees. I will just trim that part as well. So as soon as I'm done with it, I will just say finish. And I will stretch my side all the way to the other side. So now I have my whole slope. I need to just go ahead and delete my old wall. That is, I just finished the tool. Obviously it will give me a warning that it's overlapping. I'll just delete the old wall. I will make sure that those are not aligning. So I will select the face and I will be stretching it down. I'm selecting the, I will be selecting the face again. Let me just do like that. Select the face, stretch it. Now I'm all good. So I will just make sure that, okay, so this is a little bit sloped. So this is not straight. That's why the edge might look a bit weird in these cases. So that's why it's best if you use sweep rather than using this one. So I will be just using like that for now, but it gave you idea how to do the slope retaining walls. If I run a section, let's see how it looks. Let's start with a 3D section actually. It will be more interesting. So and in a second, we will be seeing 2D section, how it looks in a 2D. But if I run a 3D section here, look at this, how neat it is. So I actually 
cut my side down because I, we didn't put foundations here yet in the model, but I just made sure that I have enough space for the foundations. I put my walls, it's so neat, nothing is intersecting each other. Then I have over here again, space for foundations and I have slightly offset here because what I need is, uh, I, I need to make sure that this is sloped slightly because the side is sloping in this direction. So it's like 80% or 70% is fine for me. So I'm just doing slight offset and a little offset here, which gives me quite good amount of accuracy. So let's see how it looks in the 2D. I will just go on a side plan and I will be drawing a section across the side like this and I will be looking the other way and I will just want to see the area where I'm cutting and I will just go to the side. One of the main things that if you do this, you will not be able to see the topography. So in order to see the topography, you need to expand it a bit because like that, you will be only seeing the objects. But if you expand it slightly, you'll be able to see the topography and how it's working with the side. So that's really awesome. And you can see that everything is neat. So I have enough space for all around the house. I have enough space for the foundation and stuff that I'm looking for. So if you want to arrange your building pad height, what you need to do is just select a building pad and you can just do a height offset. So if I do four feet rather than four feet and a half, it will just go a different offset so that I can arrange my site accordingly and just draw a proper building pads around my retaining walls and making them an offset and I get the right data right away. So I generally suggest you as much as possible to use sweep for the um, extrusion retaining walls, but if you are having straight retaining walls, you can just use walls not to go in the model in place. I played with many things and then now I can go ahead and do excavation 3D zones. I can give color code those the way I want and I can even get the quantities and I can show you the three different colors and I can even show you the sheet that we prepared for the client. So this is the existing topography and this is how it looks when you step it down and you prepare it for excavation and this is how much each area will be cut and filled accordingly. So this is really, really cool feature that you can use in Revit. It's really fast to do it. That's why try to use it in your next project and you will love it because it will give you very good accuracy in just a couple of hours. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel because we are preparing to share with you a lot of great content. We will have BIM talks, we'll have AEC technology products and software reviews, and we will be having a lot of advanced Revit techniques and BIM influence videos. So there are lots of things to share with you and provide you free experience. So hit your notification icon and make sure you don't miss any of the great videos.